Hey, welcome to the podcast, Chris. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Uh, just a, a quick question to introduce you to the audience. Who do you say you are? Who do I say I am? Mm, wow. This might take a long time for me to answer. I wasn't preparing for such deep questions from the jump. Who do I say I am? Who do I say I am? I say I am a liminal being, one that cannot be conformed to one thing, but delivers artistry to the masses in small dosages. That wow. work? That, <laughs> that'll work. I, I've never heard of the term liminal, but I guess like they taught us in school, keep an eye out for uh, context clues. Yeah, yeah. Liminal beings are basically people who cannot fit into one category of things. Like I'm not just one thing that you can put in a box. So mm. you're a liminal being if you can be like a multi-hyphenated person. Got you. And I guess, how, how have you been able to, to use that, like, for yourself? And have I? Or are you asking me? What do you mean? Yeah, like, how have you been able to do that? Because you, you seem like someone that's more creative versus like someone that would just be like, oh, just, just do this, do what you're told. I mean, right, we all start off with the do what you're told. I think you just get to a point where well, at least for me in my journey, uh, I just ended up trying one thing and my first thing was drawing. And then you go from that then to being inspired to do music for me. And then from that, I was found ways that I got pushed into um, tattoos, mm -hmm. like doing tattoos and whatnot. Um, and then from that, I got pushed into uh, doing comedy and simply because the place that I was doing tattoos at right next to it is a comedy I guess training center mm, okay and from there I was like oh I can do stuff like that me very arrogant <laughs> I, like, I can do that <laughs> I do that all the time but while I'm doing tattoos so I'm like okay and then just little by little I think it's just basically you have a, a knapsack and you just oh I like this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh I like this Bruce Lee talks about it like when with martial arts where it's like you take what you need and mm -hmm. you leave everything else out you know mm -hmm. so take what you learn or take what you like and I just yeah. keep doing stuff like that and then I just put it on my back and continue chucking you know whichever way I'm going I like that approach it, it's um you you kind of get to pick and choose what you like and you don't have to like, oh man, okay, this was bad over here. So that has to come with me. It's like, no, nah, that, that can stay out there. I mean, and technically it all can get bad. <laughs> all, all, everything that I do is not an easy um, career path. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely, um, you have to love it. Anything, I guess, yeah, that's, that's the main, main thing, right? You got to love yeah. whatever it is you do. You got to love life. And I think that's where I find myself at where it's like, what could I love to do today? And mm. then I just pursue that. So I, I guess like you were saying, you you got into comedy because it was right next to the tattoo shop. So like, what, what, what was it like for you starting in comedy? Um, well, so I had already gotten a unique uh, perspective from performing because I used to uh, rap a lot. I used to like battle kids in schools, stupid stuff like that. Um, and I got that performance aspect. Hmm. And I really noticed that. Um, and I, I'll bring this back. I'll bring this back around. Yeah, yeah. I really I noticed you. through <laughs> through uh, performing through poetry. I would also do slams and things like that. Um, but through rapping, I would notice that you can be lyrical mm -hmm. and that's cool but if you really want to win full-on battles like i've noticed a shortcut where if you're funny you can win so much faster and and i know, found that shortcut and it's like okay so i'm gonna try to be funny i'm gonna be lyrical but i'm gonna try to be funny to embarrass my opponent um and so 
it was like that. And then I was always just humorous in school. I was always a class clown and whatnot. Um, but then, so when you get into comedy, you start learning the structures of it. You start learning, all right, don't just be blurting anything out. So you learn how to time your specific joke at a uh, the timing, I guess, and where it hits harder or it hits yeah. the hardest. Like a lot of times uh, when I would go to college, I'm already doing comedy. I'm already doing tattoos. And you'd hear someone trying to be a class clown. I'm sitting in the back just like this. Nobody knows me. Yeah. And you see a kid <laughs> trying to be funny. And I'm like, mm, timing's off. Mm -mm. No, no, time, no. And then like later on in class, I'd be like, okay, my turn. And I would say something, boom. And it's just you learn the structures of comedy that's basically what i went there for you learn yeah. timing you learn um how to improvise in the moment you learn um the power of yes and so yeah. it's it's funny when when you mention timing and when i think about it it's like anyone that's usually naturally comedic like you have to you have it's something that you do authentically without planning it, but it's like, if you're up on a stage, like you, you have to plan it without planning it. So, so to speak. And that's a, that's an interesting take because I, I had this idea because I was thinking to myself, I was like, Oh, maybe I should do like a, I should go either to a comedy show and put my place in a place to, put myself in a place to be roasted to where if I feel like I'm having a hard time dealing with jokes, if I'm being too sensitive, maybe that's what I should like put myself in the fire. But then it's like, um, if I were to bring it on a, the podcast per se and be like, Hey, we're going to have a roast session. You roast me for a few minutes and let me see if I can take it. And I, I pitched that to someone and they're like, no, I, it's like, I either do it in the moment or I don't do it. And I was like, all right, fair enough. I mean, there, there's many things to that. Uh, what would you? What would be the benefits of being roasted? Just to well, to take a joke or patience? I'd say probably both of those. Either be able to be like, okay, I, I can take a joke, and just know that it's not mean spirited. Just be like, okay, the the jokes. Like, if something really hits you like it really hits you deep it's like okay maybe i need to check myself there and it'd be like okay like it's not that serious they're not they're not really wounding me it's like it hurts it's personal but it, it's gonna be okay yeah yeah i think i definitely got that um i was uh born and raised in florida and i definitely feel like that's also a part of how i got interested in comedy as a you know where kids are just horrible bullies right so yeah. <laughs> then it there would literally be a we wouldn't uh like at a certain period so it was like gym i believe i play basketball every now and then but i got so involved with another group of people that all they did was roast each other the entire time yeah. some a whole hour and a half or whatever where you're supposed to be playing basketball no we in the bleachers just talking crap about someone else oh your shoes look like this oh your haircut look like this you know your shirt your boot like this that that your girlfriend you know and it was just <laughs> constant every single day and i started when enjoying it um i don't do roasting as much unless i'm doing stand-up and like someone tries to interrupt me mm -hmm. um i have evolved i mean as everyone will throughout time especially if you get in comedy but i think my comedy has evolved into i want to um make people laugh but i also want to uplift and not try to um make people feel uh, what's the word like one thing is taking a joke yeah this and that but yeah i guess i don't maybe deflated yeah I, yeah i just want everyone to feel like they're having a great time i mean again if yeah. someone acts up someone talks back someone tries to do too much they're too drunk that's one thing and i say right. my truth to that but I won't go overboard, I think, and be like, like, there are some clips of comedians that just go and say some intense yeah. stuff. 
It's like they just start talking about someone's feel little. Yeah, they're like, that's why your dad didn't like you. It's like, oh, Whoa. yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's like, so many things like, I've heard. <laughs> chill out, chill out. Right. And and then there goes to the point where it's like, if you do too much mm-hmm. and you, you make that person feel bad too much, then the audience starts feeling for them. And then it's harder to get the rest of the audience back on board with your jokes or your story or whatever. Right. That, that's interesting. But I guess maybe the, the roast idea isn't my best idea. But sometimes it's like oh. you, you got something that comes into your head and it's like, maybe and it's like, maybe not. But like that's why I ask if if it's there for patience, mm-hmm. I'm sure you can develop a lot of patience while just people just literally trash talking you. You know, yeah. so I, I'm not knocking your your idea. I think it's definitely um, a different approach, right? Right, right. But I mean, I I like what you say about comedy, and I guess that's one of the things I I appreciate about it because it's like um especially when you're doing hard jobs or if you're doing something difficult it it helps to lighten up the mood so to speak because i've I've spent a lot of times working with people that are in trades doing like heavy manual labor and people that just come from different backgrounds and usually it's like a getting to know you process where someone they'll like if you're new to a group you'll get poked fun of a little bit, but it's like, if you let it bother you, then it's like, oh, like this bothers him. Let's, let's, let's scratch this itch a little bit longer. But then it's like, oh, like the moment you're able to kind of dish it back or kind of let it roll off your back, people are like, okay, you seem cool. Like you don't have, like everybody can't be a comedian. And it's like, if you know, like you got the jokes or you don't got them, it's like, as so long as you know your role and you're not trying to interrupt and like, interject with like oh let me let me tell you about this story there's two two things that i i agree with you and there's two things where um i definitely find like i think when we're talking about friends and we're talking about new groups there's that there's the i don't want to say it's machismo or whatnot i think it's a it's a testing the waters, right? They want to test to see where you are. And I have grown up with many people like that. And especially in my friend circle, it's like, aha, when they, like when they're one-on-one, we're cool. But then when they get around other people, they want to act up a little bit. They want (laughs) to tease my friend. And sometimes you just got to verbally jab them. Hey, you better step back. (laughs) So they'll stop playing with you. Right. And, that that's how i see that and then um also with being that i'm a tattoo artist um a lot of times people are nervous a lot of times people are scared they don't know how to handle those emotions oh i'm about to have this first layer of skin surgery right Mm -hmm. (laughs) and i choose to give my clients an experience um, whether if it's putting fun music and I'm like, ah, I could, be, I could rap sometimes like with those yeah. people, uh, I'll beatbox, I'll make them feel comfortable depending on the situation and who they are. Right. I make them feel comfortable, laugh it out, whatever the case may be. Um, so that they have a great time getting the tattoo. Uh, if That's that makes a good sense. Point. Yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense because it's, I've, I haven't gotten a tattoo or thought about getting a tattoo, but that's one of the things that kind of jumps in my head when I think like, man, okay, you're going to sit there and someone's either like inking on your skin with the needle and they're just, it's like going to the doctor and getting a shot feels rough. Like I'm, it's, you get comfortable. I'm like, should I look or just, just don't look, don't look over there. Just (laughs) don't pay attention to what's going on. But to your point, when someone's able to joke with you a little bit and like they completely distract you from what's going on, you're like, oh, so when do you start? It's like, oh, we're done. It's like, oh, right. That wasn't so bad. Like, let me, let me come back and visit you again. You seem pretty cool. Yeah. Just giving them, uh, my clients a full on experience, uh, making them laugh. Sometimes I make them laugh too much and they, (laughs) they're like trying to hold still and I'm like, what's wrong? You know, coochie, coochie, coochie. I act a fool Uh, (laughs) and so yeah I definitely think that uh, 
comedy has served that purpose uh you know it, and it's always been around it's just the difference of when i took it serious or not and then you start developing your own twist your own style what do you use it for things like that so i guess how how did you how are you able to blend like being an artist with being a comedian and just being a like a creative all in all like how do you um how would i say how, how do you manage your your time in that do you kind of just go <laughs> off of whatever comes to your mind and you're like oh okay this would be a cool project to do or like you set time aside during the week to do certain things all of the above <laughs> all of the above because i think man it, it's still something that i tr i work on every single day like for a month i'll have a strict schedule that's some some with a goal in mind then the next month i'll have things like i'll have tattoo appointments uh, but then i'm loose i'm just okay i got an interview okay mm -hmm. cool, cool, cool let's I got, I got a podcast or or i'm doing mine mm -hmm. or you know whatever the case may be and then oh i forgot it's my cousin's birthday so i have to switch everything around yeah. or oh i re get random gigs in, in between like stand-up shows um i'll get uh like someone wants some customized shoes uh and i have to drop everything sort of to go do that because they're paying for it right so i mean it's such a Man, it's such a, again, a liminal thing where sometimes I'm extremely structured, uh, depending on the goal, right? If I mm -hmm. have a deadline for something, if I'm, for example, directing a short film or whatever the case may be, then I have to be strict with every portion of the week. But then sometimes I'd be like, man, forget all this. I'm going to go to Puerto Rico and I'm just hang out for a month, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And it's, how do you, I mean, to answer your question, because that's such a difficult question for me. Um, I just been going with life. Yeah, I've been going with whatever life gives me, especially at this point, especially where we're at in this time where tomorrow, I mean, we've always been in a time where tomorrow we could die, but I think it's been more real uh, the past three years, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm um and you you start valuing certain things and you put that in your bracket of your schedule right if some days where i'm like oh man i don't feel like doing stand up or i don't feel like i'll i'll do something else right i'll i'll do art i'll paint that day uh, if i'm not doing painting then i'm writing a script if i'm not doing that then i'm doing graphic design i'm always busy and i can't right. stop that that part i can't stop even if i say i'm a chill nah i'm drawing i'm working on like a painting over yeah. here oh, i am nice. uh thank you um i'll be doing something there's no way uh, that, that's just the workaholic that i got instilled from like my mother from all being a single mother she's always working had a couple jobs and so definitely even if I say I'm not doing something, I'm mm -hmm. just chilling. Nah, I'm I'm either thinking of comedy bits, I'm either thinking of my next thing, my next script, joke. My brain is always moving. So yeah. how do I deal with that? To run <laughs> your question, uh, man, it's it's just taking it day by day and valuing what matters first, and then going from there. I, I like I like that. Because I, I like that you you give yourself the option to have multiple things to do and to be able to go from one thing to the other to where it's like if something isn't working out, if like you're not doing a tattoo, if you're just relaxing, you're like, oh, I, I can doodle or I can draw. It's like you're not you don't always have to be like this has to be done to create something, to give me an opportunity to do something, to help me become like world leader or something like that but it's just like allowing yourself to say okay I, I can have set goals that need to be met by deadlines but I can also have 
time to just be myself and just let whatever comes or flows or hey if it's time to just change the scenery change the scenery for a little bit but i think that yeah. that's that's very important it, it it is i i definitely think it is it's not easy to get there it's easier said than done because um you know many people have multiple jobs many people have you know kids have different things and i can't be like yeah i'm living this high life you know doing my thing and it, it's a lot harder for individuals but i ain't got no kids i, I but i've always been grinding since i could pick up a pencil if that mm. makes sense i've right. always been training for some big thing and i'll get there in due time when the universe wants it yeah and i think it's just literally working at something every single day just even if it's something small yeah it's a flyer for somebody if it's a flyer for myself for a comedy show for I'm going to be in this city doing tattoos, you know, doing a video, doing whatever the case may be. And it's consistently, or no, that's what it is. It's being consistent. Yeah. Being consistent with your craft or whatever it is that you do. So it's always, if I'm drawing, I'm doing comedy, I could be, I could literally do both. Like I could watch some stand up while also painting or doing a flyer. So it's like, I'm always learning, doing something that never stops, yeah. which is very hard for people who have multiple jobs. They have a, a normal nine to five. You literally have to spend that time working for someone else's dream. Right. But I think something that's important in what you just said is that like your life is different from someone else's life. But I, I think the distinction that has to be made is what what is it that you're going to do for your personal life because it's like some for some people it might be having multiple jobs or having a family or w whatever it is but it's like there there are times whether it's minutes or like an hour of time that you can like carve out and really spend time with yourself i think that those are the times when you can really evaluate what you have going on because if if the if the reason is or is always i can't do a because of b it's like there's always going to be a reason why you can't do something and that that's not to say like it's easy to point to the extreme examples, but that's why I say it has to be personalized where you have to be honest with yourself and really ask yourself the question of like, okay, what is it that I'm, I'm not doing that I, I could be doing? And I like that. And as we're having the conversation, you're pointing specifically to what you're doing, not to give someone advice on like, oh, you should do what I do. It's like, no, this, this is what I'm doing. This is what's working for me. And What's funny that on on my end, as um, in spending more time with myself and getting a sense of like, okay, what am I gonna do today? Like, how am I going to best spend the day? So I was playing like an old video game from 2010, FIFA Soccer, and I was like, you know that this isn't bad. Like, don't feel guilty for just chilling. Like when I woke up this morning, it's like, okay. I read a passage before that, that was talking about making decisions based on your, I guess, your spiritual nature or your flesh nature. And I was like, what does that mean? And I just laid back in bed and didn't do anything. But then this morning, I thought about it. And I was like, oh, you should probably put those clothes away over there that you uh, got out of the, the washer and dryer. And I was like, OK, well, what else? And I was like, no, just go fold your clothes and put them away. And it's like, I went and I did that. And I was like, now I don't feel so bad for playing this game, but it's like, I, <laughs> I, I told myself, I'm going to put my clothes away. I'm going to play this game. I'm going to do a podcast. And then if something else comes up, I can go do that, but I'm not going to sit there and worry about like, Oh, like maybe I need to come up with, this grandiose thing. I need to go like to this extreme. It's like, maybe, like maybe it'll, it'll come and then I can write it down and say, um, yeah, let me just travel over here. 
like the idea just came to my mind. Let me drive to this town that's an hour and a half away. It's not too far in the afternoon. And it's like, I'll, I'm going to go there, just walk around, see what's going on downtown and just take it in. Maybe, maybe see if they have a comedy show for the night, sit in and then go from there. Yeah, I, I mean, I, and I'm definitely, I feel you on that, where it's like, some days, and I say, I say that more now, because before I was strictly, nah, I can't be playing video games, I can't be doing that, I gotta work, 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 I gotta do this, I gotta do, and that's because I'm living in Los Angeles, that rent's gotta be paid, that rent's so goddamn high, and it's, it's just this hustle mentality. And I've been in sort of in that hustle mentality since like 2008. Mm. And now with the pandemic just punching me right in my mouth and just, oh, slow down. Mm. It's not that serious or it's not that important. You, you know, when life gets you, uh what are you leaving back behind that really matters what really makes you happy what why are you beating yourself up i always beat myself up uh, i'll tell you that you know honestly where it's like even like they're for writers for comedy they're like festivals or different things to submit mm -hmm. right for jobs they're like yeah. submitting to be, uh consider for a job and i'll literally see a job and i'm like Ah, I can do that. Like storyboard artists. I can mm -hmm. do storyboards. I've done them for different uh, projects, stuff like that. But to see the job and I'm like, ah, I could do that. Like, let me, mm -hmm. and I'll beat myself up, even though I don't really l love doing storyboards, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, I can do them. I'll do them for, especially for my own stuff. But to say that I love to do it and then to use my time to do someone else's project, I would have to have a specific goal in mind. I was like, oh, this connection, this will build on my resume, this will do something. But if not, let it go. Yeah. You know, let the opportunity, you know, whatever the case may be, because what is going to serve myself now will, will be me, or <clears throat> let me rephrase that. Will me stressing out, trying to now create a portfolio for a storyboard to submit to that, be more important than spending some extra time with my grandparents before you never know. Right. What, what, and it, it, it could just be watching a novella with them or some shit, you know, what is more valuable at the end of the day and that's why i find myself going back and forth with where it's like ah i gotta be doing this i gotta be doing that but being that i've been so far from them doing the hustle and bustle in this other life the pandemic showed me that from another angle of what makes you happy mm -hmm. and what's really important to you so if you've had a stressful day, you know, if a peace of mind comes from playing a video game, I mean, I've been playing video games, you know, throughout the pandemic. Before that, I wasn't though. I, yeah. I, I felt like, nah, I can't do that. It sidetracks me. But I've been playing a lot of video games since then because it, it just, it's been able to enjoy it or enjoy time, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It just relaxes, you know, yourself. You're able to escape into another world of whatever game you play. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm doing Red Dead uh, Redemption. Uh, you know, being a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> I like that game. <laughs> you know that? Yeah, that game. You know, I'm in a whole different world, right? Yeah. And I think that has been um, the key, or at least where I'm at. It's points and i don't know if did i answer your question yeah you did okay cool, cool. just double check it sometimes i'll keep no right. no I, I i like where you're going because it's like I, um i try my best to ask open-ended questions so that you can just talk talk through it and just still continue to have a conversation because it, it's um you, you said some very good things that resonated with me in that because it's it's there's something to be said about having 
like having a goal or working working on something working towards something that that reinforces what it is that you're doing but also it's it's good to value the time that you have because there's something to be said for a lot of people use the terminology grinding and um i kind of i'd really obsessed with that coming out of school late 20 yeah, I graduated December 2013 and it started working that January and it's like getting into the workforce right out of college and it's like oh, okay like this is what it was this is why you got a degree because you're out here but then um kind of having con confronting like a little bit of imposter syndrome versus like okay what is it that I'm trying to do like you you got hired to do a job you're able to do the job and it's like you you're not expected to know everything right off the bat but the ability to work at something helps and having little relief valves or something that lets you be creative it keeps you from just being the okay I, I go to work I go home I go to work I go home it's like yeah it's it's great to go to work and it's necessary to say I'm going to go to work on time be early be there, do exactly what I need to do and go home. But once I go home, like that stops. If I still want to work on a personal project, I want to do that fine. But like I, I learned not to, not to let work life bleed into home life. And even it's like, if, if you don't have a home life, I had to learn how to, it's like from 2014 to 2019, I didn't have a true hobby, but I, I would kind of dabble into things like either go to the gym, meet up with some people, play Frisbee, go to something that's like personal development, join Toastmasters, join other groups online. But it's like, after a while, it just became stack, stack, stacking like more tasks and more do, 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 do. And it was like, okay, well, maybe I, I don't want to just keep making checklists and just okay, I got this done. I got that done. I got this. I got that. And it's like, uh, I think I'm losing my time and I'm losing myself along the way. So just like you said, being able to have that reset and come back to really say, okay, what, what's really working and what's not, and just put to the side what's not working and just take in what, what is for the moment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with all that um, and uh, I think what really was uh, a changing factor I had a conversation with someone who was from India and someone from who was from Africa they were both roommates they were living in San Francisco and um, they were like we make our lives so much more difficult like where they're well where this guy specifically was from India he was like, man, we just worry about what we gonna eat that day. We don't worry about electricity. We don't worry about paying rent. We don't worry about nothing. Just what we gonna eat, and we just having fun. And I was like, what? That is like mind blowing, right? Like I can't. What? I, I was just. We make our own lives difficult with all these extra things that really do not matter. And. Yeah. As much as I would love to be a successful showrunner to put on my own TV show, put my friends on, do the music, do the voiceover, do the writing, do the character design, whatever. At the end of the day, that shit don't really mean anything. Can we cuss on here? My bad. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Okay. <laughs> uh, it really don't. It means something to me because it's what I want and I also want to create a difference within like i want to have minorities in an adult animated thing that's besides the point mm -hmm. that is my purpose that's what i want to do i want to make a difference in my lane but at the end of the day it really don't mean nothing none of this crap means anything and that might <laughs> go over some people's heads but uh, at the end of the day right what matters most yeah that's where i'm at at least specifically so I, I get you on that it's like having the time to have your 
you got to have your your three healths, your mental health, your physical health, your environmental health, all good. Mm-hmm. That comes first. Because without those things, then you can't get to what makes you happy and be able to choose that. If your right. environmental health, if you hanging out with the wrong kind of crowd, the wrong people, putting, getting you in trouble, which I have experience with, mm-hmm. um, art helps take me out of that. Art helped uh guide me in another way staying busy um those kinds of things if your physical health i mean that's really most important to be Mm -hmm. honest if you don't got your physical health together that's gonna limit you on a lot of things in life um and then your what was i say physical oh your mental mental yeah that mental health right there uh is also crucial right so overwhelming myself with so much work sometimes it's like nah let me go like what you're saying play this video game let me get out of this or not even that maybe just let me go meditate Mm -hmm. let me go walk in the woods uh park whatever the case may be yeah Um, when i'm in la i'm like okay let me go to venice beach and just walk and enjoy and people watch and read oh there ain't nothing better than that i've found yeah that. <laughs> uh reading reading mm-hmm. is so crucial uh and learning more perspectives traveling all those things yeah it, it's funny when when you mention um reading because it, it's like there's so many different things to read and even now that you can listen to books to where i'm like I've got to remind myself to switch up what I'm reading or what I've been reading because it's like with getting on the, like the, uh, what did I say? Like mental health, like building myself up, personal development, wanting to become more. It's like, there was a lot of work into, okay, this is how you become better. But a lot of it was into becoming better by achieving or becoming better by doing things to make me look at my best but at the same time it's now it's about doing the work where it's okay am i sustaining me the person outside of what i can do as a job what i can do for someone else like am i doing enough for myself and like do i do i truly care about myself when i wake up because like it's easy to run and take care of someone else but it's like if i can't do that same thing for me then it's like that's a problem Uh, that's a real issue because it's and that that's one of those things where it kind of brings into focus it's like okay where where am i really spending all my time like what am i spending my time on and similar thing with like the the video game thing it's um knowing like having a a place and time for it and if it's like okay I've been I've been playing this a long time I hadn't played it in 10 years and now I'm playing for like five hours straight it's like okay let's take a break (laughs) get some rest we actually got to go do something now but even Monday like I went for I guess you could call it a, a hike so to speak you walk around a park and they've got trails mapped out and things like that and it felt strange at first because like I'm just walking I'm like oh like I do kind of enjoy doing this and it's like okay and then I I I got off the trail for a minute and I was like uh let's not do that again (laughs) because I just kept going around and around it's like I thought this thing said it was a mile like how much time's (laughs) gone by it's like I said I was gonna be out here for two hours it's like I'm already an hour in and I feel like I've just been walking around in a circle and I was like okay well this is all that I said I was gonna have to do today so I don't I don't have to run anywhere I can go back put my bag down chill take a shower just sit like okay I walked I saw the sights this is something different I'm might check it out another time i might not but at least i i decided to come here i drove park got out meandered around maybe got lost a couple of times but i eventually found my way back to the car and i i brought water so i didn't fall out or anything like that That's so good. All, all in all in all it was a 
it was a good experience. It was like, it was different, but I was like, man, okay, I haven't done this in a minute. So it's, it's good to be reminded of what, what's, what's there to be enjoyed. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, what was great that you had hit on was um, like when you're, you're too long at the park, you get lost, yeah. right? <laughs> you, you, you're too long playing a video game. You're too long doing, you know, in that relationship that you shouldn't be in. You're too long. And it, I think that's what it is, right? It's everything is in moderation. Yeah. Everything. And that's so crucial, right? It's like, you got to be on, you know, on your grind for so long until you um, exhaust yourself mm, and, yeah. and you don't take care of yourself. You can be everything, every little thing is that. And um, a lot of people don't like to see that, especially when we live in a society where the amount of works, money, whatever the case may be, is your status on who mm -hmm. you are. Right. So I definitely think uh, everything in moderation is crucial but then also like, depending on what you do, okay, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna play this video game for an hour, Yeah. whatever the case may be. Or, I mean, I think it's just with intention, right? With your setting, it's like, okay, no, nah, this day, Saturday or Sunday, I'm going to just play video games so I can get it out of my system mm -hmm. and just play all day, just use this day, you know, and then tomorrow I'm back on the hustle of whatever it is, maybe. Yeah. And I think what, what's good about that, what you said, is that um, moderation is good, but also not beating yourself up when you recognize that you've maybe gone further than where you were supposed to go or lingered longer. It's like looking at things and, and speaking on things differently instead of being from like a regret perspective. It's like, okay, I'm not where I'm supposed to be right now. I'm aware of that. So let me stop what I'm doing and re like, let's get back to where I'm supposed to be or look at where, how I, how I can get back over there because it's like, you can get caught up in, I'm supposed to do this, 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 this. And then the moment you're not doing that, now you're worried about, I didn't do this, 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 this. It's like, okay, like, here's what you set out to do. You either did it or you didn't do it. Now you have a choice to make whether are you gonna are you gonna to linger on you not doing it or are you going to find another way to help yourself out and just kind of okay, like what do we do next? Yeah, I think the biggest lesson I've gotten from books or what one that changed the game for me was uh the alchemist by paulo coelho you ever read it yeah i think i, I have I, I, i'm trying to remember when i read that but yeah well there's a for no spoiler alerts but uh <laughs> there's a story it's not the main story but there is a story in the book where uh the kid goes to a kingdom to meet the king and the king's busy doing stuff and he's like well if you want to learn about me and my riches take uh this spoon and then you know the oil that's in it you know go mm -hmm. around my kingdom but don't let any of this oil spill and the kid does it he goes around the kingdom he comes back the oil's still on the spoon and he's like, what'd you think of my beautiful kingdom? He's like, I ain't see nothing. I'm too busy <laughs> looking at this spoon. Right. Right. And I think that's so important because when the king says, well, no, go around, look at my riches. I got zoos. I got libraries. I got beautiful paintings. I got everything here. And he, the kid does it again. But this time he comes back around, he sees the king, and he's like, how was it? He was like, it's beautiful. It's, you know, amazing. I've never seen anything like it. And he's, look, he's like, but what about the spoon? And there's no oil in it. <laughs> that right there is when he says that that's the key to life. Right there. When you can 
look at the riches of the world and all this, but balance your little life that's on that is the oil on the spoon. Mm -hmm. And that moment, like, yeah, when I read that, I was like, bush, bush. just how that's explaining everything we're talking about right now. Where yeah. What matters, what's important, but also have time to look around, to enjoy these things. And especially for me, like, what's so great in my careers is that I, without life, there's no material to use so mm. like for comedy i need to be in tune with life i need yeah. to be if anything it's gonna give me more material uh you know just going to the park oh man i went to the park and i went to this uh specific spot and i'm just making stuff oh no i gotta one time i went to a beach mm-hmm. <laughs> and i'm chilling we're hanging out at the beach and i go oh let's go get some ice cream and then I seen in this area, it's a more predominantly white area, I seen a couple ice cream names that really uh, stood out to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll, one of them was Plantation Praline. Then I was like, oh, we're in this area? Okay. <laughs> then there's the Blueberry Lives Matter ice cream. And I just started going within this and yeah. in this ridiculous... <laughs> Uh, tow truck, raspberry red. I just started going all up in this idea. Uh, and boom, then I have, okay, cool. That's my material, you know, for the day or whatever the case may be. And I use that, yeah. you know, without that, there's nothing. So it's like when I'm writing stories, when I am uh, even sometimes tattooing, you know, where it's like, oh, the details in this tree that I see, oh, the way the light hits it, the way the, you know, whatever the case may be. I use that as a part of it. So that's the good thing. It's not easy. Yeah. But you have to see that and appreciate the world in that way. Maybe that's me being an only child. There's a lot of things that could, you know, be chalked up to this kind of idea, but that's how I see things. Yeah. But I, I like that idea of, of being able to use stories and relate to your environment and and just either for the aspect of wanting to take in your environment and saying, okay, I have to be out there in order to like do the thing that, that gets me going. Like if, if I want to share a story, I've got to actually experience something like it, it, you can be in your imagination and there are great things you can come up with in your head, but it, it's more relatable if you can speak to something that someone else has seen and be like, oh, okay, yeah, I've, I've seen that. Because as, as soon as you started mentioning like the plantation uh, ice cream, I was like, at first I was like, what? But then I, I know for me, where I live out in Georgia, like as I'm driving up the highway, there's a, uh, literally on the side of the road, there's something called, it's like, it's plantation something, but it's like in big bold letters. And a, a friend of mine, he got married and, down in this area because it's where he grew up but like as we were coming down for his wedding it's like we were it still had the name plantation on it and like we're like "Uh oh (laughs) like we don't want to get disappeared but it's it's interesting because on the one hand like somebody would be like oh no you got to get rid of all of that but it's like no like some things are important to be kept whether it's like it has good or bad connotations and like being able to joke about things lets you kind of maintain a sense of like this is the reality of life like there are things that are here things that were here and the best way not to forget about it is to kind of remember it have it present make it within the story because it's like if if you try and hide away all the things that you don't like in the world, like kind of going back to poking fun and like getting together in groups and being like, okay, like who is this person really? Like if you try and just hide yourself away and be Mr. Vanilla and like, oh, nothing's good. Next thing you know, like they're showing up on the news. It's like, oh, they had all these skeletons in the closet. It's like, oh my goodness, (laughs) nobody knew, but it's like somebody knew, but they just slowly just put, Put things away. I get you. I get you. Yeah. yeah. So it's just 
using those things, using, and I can only speak for myself, right? So, right, right, so right. Like, it, it's the just using life, using. There's a lot of gems that we dropped on this. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> they, they. I hope people paying you for the subscription. <laughs> We'll Dang. see. We'll see. There's a lot of gems we didn't just dropped in this 30 minutes or however long we've been on it. Yeah. Um, but I, I was yeah. gonna ask you how how'd you go from did you go from Florida to California back to Florida? Yeah, yeah. How, was that what happened? Gotcha. Was that uh, yeah. just during the pandemic time or can you walk me through that? Yeah, yeah. So I moved out to California in like 2013. Um to pursue comedy on a higher level, uh, to learn how to direct my own shows, how to direct in general, uh, produce them, and then take my acting to another level. Um, and I was doing great, you know, and I was teaching. I ended up, you know, of course, throughout the years, I ended up being able to teach, direct my own productions, um, you know, until the pandemic hit. <laughs> So that's really what initially happened. And then LA was in a lockdown for about a year. And so, man, I'm just sitting here wasting money on rent. <laughs> so I said, hey, let me, I haven't been with my family in years. So you, what really did it was going through that first Thanksgiving, that first Christmas, you know, those first set of holidays stuck in a small apartment, man. I'm talking about... This, this is bigger than my, this is just a room in yeah. comparison to my apartment that was over there. Right. And so uh, that really did it. Like it was tough um, just being there, not only that whole year and a half in this lockdown, but also seeing your family from a distance, sort of like the Zoom thing. It's like, God damn. <laughs> you know what re what really matters you know yeah. i'm over here doing this and that so i'll just go over there and help you know help them out or just see what happens yeah and uh that aspect has been great you know hanging out with family things like that um but also the comedy scene is killing me out here <laughs> the man is the it, it's a lot slower it's not as many opportunities here it's really uh what's the the phrase sucking the life out of me in a sense like it's not the same it's it's a whole different ball game and less opportunities right and yeah. so that's the only thing that i'm balancing currently where it's like again we're going through what makes you happy what really matters does that stuff matter and so that's where i'm at um so yeah that came back basically for that time being but i'm also bi-coastal so bro i mean all i gotta do is take a flight yeah. somewhere else and like I, last year i was going all over the place last year um when i got here i ended up just taking flights to Cancun. I went to Minnesota. I went to Puerto Rico for a month. I went to Georgia twice. Mm -hmm. um, I went one for the Atlanta, the Atlanta Comedy Festival they had, All the Laughs oh, Comedy okay. Festival. Yeah, I was like a one of the finalists or something like that and uh, for stand-up. And then I ended up just enjoying that, you know, uh, seeing, you know, Atlanta from a whole new perspective as an adult uh which is really cool i like that um and just enjoying life you're doing the same thing right you're doing a little bit of what you love but then also enjoying what's really important doing what you, and but that's the thing about me where it's like i can make money where i go i bring my tattoo stuff yeah. and you know and then also i can bring my comedy stuff and i'm just like this uh powerhouse of things that i'll i'll make something work yeah which what you were talking about before the imposter syndrome all these things growing up i wouldn't have been able to do that if i didn't go to los angeles and you know rub elbows with some of the people who are killing it these days right right so yeah i guess have, have you thought about um or have you been able to connect with many comedians where you're at now or are they just kind of far and few between 
Yeah, I have been able to. Uh, I make the best of what I've had. Um, what you got to do, and which is what I did, you got to get into the scene. And so what I did is I'm a teacher already in at Second City and a couple other places, hmm. um, which is a large comedy theater. Um, and is there one in, like, in Florida as well as the one in Chicago? No, no. Just <laughs> the, the one in L.A. is no longer there at the moment. Gotcha. Uh, LA, uh, Chicago's still there and Toronto's still there. Gotcha. Um, so I could go over there if I really wanted to, um, but that's a whole nother, you know, lifestyle. That's a whole nother ball game. I've never been right. to these specific places. And then, but to make what I was saying is that I like taking classes. So I always try to maintain a couple classes a year. It doesn't matter what it could be master class. It right. could be, you know, some Patreon class, whatever. I try to maintain classes. Uh, because it keeps you, it keeps uh, sharpening the sword, right? You're, you're right, uh, right. sharpen, you know. Whatever. So I registered into a class out here. <laughs> Just, I already know this, most of the stuff, but mm -hmm. there's always something you can learn, right? There's True. always something somewhere you just might find the nugget. Uh, and that's what I did. And so I've met some people, you know, I ha I do like a, an open mic. I host one not too far from there. It's straight, yeah. but it's not. I was performing three times at least a week in L.A. I do some tattoos. I would only do tattoos uh, Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays, mm -hmm. sometimes Mondays uh, and uh, or unless it was an appointment. But then in between, I'm coaching a team in between. I'm directing a show um i'm doing something yeah so that was my life uh, so to come back and it's just like it's very slow out here you get one open mic maybe a night if mm -hmm. that um and so it's a lot slower and so it's like nah i needed to be doing something and right. so it, that portion is you know is but then you know, you just go back and forth with the what makes you happy, <laughs> right? And you try to enjoy the moment, you try to enjoy family, and you try to balance those things out. Gotcha. I was I was curious, like if if you're able to to like host your own open mic, or if like if there are more restrictions for it to be like, okay, no, you have to be somebody to host this, or like I've I've heard in the past that com like all comedians aren't necessarily always willing to work with each other so it's like you've got to build bridges build relationships and there's that type of yeah thing. there's that and then i come from the city so it's like and people haven't seen me do anything in eight years or so gotcha. so people don't even know me because people are very new or whatever the mm -hmm. case may be so i came out of nowhere for them i've been here right, with, right. For, for other people in the scene i came out of nowhere and uh yeah it's very true you got to develop those relationships you got to develop your presence you got to show up to these boo-boo horrible ass open mics yeah <laughs> and... i guess what what's the difference between like um I've, I've maybe been to like one open mic before but like how how do you describe the difference of like going to a, a regular open mic that just happens in a smaller town versus like being at like the cellar or one of those high highlight things where people are expecting like the big guns to come in and be like okay this person goes and then that person goes and then that person goes it, it's it's definitely the small or big fish in a small pond kind of thing where mm -hmm. everyone who who feels like they're a big fish in their smaller pond goes to these places la new york you know things like that and that's the those are the two meccas for comedy specifically mm -hmm. um now the difference is is more opportunities right it might not be necessarily a better crowd or anything but you have more opportunities throughout the day like every hour of the day i would say you could probably find an open mic in los angeles and i'm sure the same could be for new york because i think if anything there's more in New York than there is in LA because I hear, you know, comedians doing five sets a night. 
Oh, and wow. in LA, you could probably do three or f- three or four. I mean, you really have to have a car. You have to begin somewhere. I didn't yeah. have a car. I would take the train or Ubers and shit. Um, so that that means like you're going from one one location to another location to get that. And you can treat set. it like a full time job, mm. as opposed to here specifically in Florida, you have one mic maybe a night monday through friday it, no there's none on friday yeah. monday through thursday and i'm not talking about miami this is specifically central florida gotcha uh and you might have that and then you have 30 to 40 comedians all trying to get to that one spot yeah Bro, that and and it's not like they're seasoned they're just probably drunk and they're probably yeah, a lot of times that happens people, people don't have specific etiquette with hosting with putting on your own show things like that so that goes all derailed and so it, it's tough in that sense yeah where if there was a place specifically again for central florida if there and this is where i go back and forth is like oh i could just create it yeah but then that takes time that requires a lot of peace that requires a lot of work and i'm not saying i can't do it it's just more of does that make me happy will that satisfy me you know to put all that work in you know Mm -hmm. in a city that you know may or may not appreciate it you don't know right so that's where i go back and forth with is like oh if i see the gap that that's a sign to do it true so I just got to meditate on that. If that's what I'm supposed to do, maybe we come back and a couple more years, we get this podcast again uh, <laughs> with, with, with the grand opening. I don't know. I don't, I really don't know. I'm just in that space of the waiting for the universe to give me the green light on what specifically I'm meant to be here for. Right. That's it. Until then I just do little things and increments of that gives me dopamine. So <laughs> It's a good point. I, I I like what you said there because it's um I was trying to find this thing to to read to you because what when you when you said it it kind of resonated with me and uh okay this quote says it's in responsibility that most people find the meaning that sustains them through life. It's not happiness. It's not an, an impulsive pleasure. And for some reason that that kind of re- resonates with me because like I agree that you should do things that make you happy. And I'm not saying this to say like, okay, this is what you should do. This is the answer you've been asking yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. But just when every time I keep, I I would, I hear that like, do things that make you happy especially with the pen the pandemic and things like that but really um when i saw this quote when it talks about um it's in responsibility that most people find meaning i think that meaning part is really important because that's what that's that that for me at least is what kind of answers that question like you were saying before does this really matter and and it kind of lets you know okay like is all that grinding all that working like at the end of the day like what is this going to actually do and for like for some people that i've met that are parents they may not be entrepreneurs or they they just work those things over and over like they may not like it they might be sick and they just keep showing up they keep showing up because they're they're usually doing it for someone else and it's like what does that actually mean and it's it's always that thing of like okay is this something that's going to have meaning and for me like i I point to my mom because she's been um just always working most of her life and her thing has always been like let me check on my kids see how they're doing. And a lot of times, or a couple of times, like last year, I I was able to be at home and spend the better part of the year with her work at a local job. And I would keep telling her over and over, it's like, 
as much as you did for us as children, like you can't be obsessed or you can't be upset that the moment something isn't wrong with one of your kids, it's immediately your fault. It's like that. It's almost like that overcorrection where it's like you get so obsessed with getting something right that if it doesn't work right, you just, you're just blaming yourself and being upset with yourself. But um, I, I just wanted to share that because it, it just kept, it just kept popping into my head. And I was like, that's the thing that I'm searching for right now. And in searching for it, like stopping to smell the roses, like you were talking about giving the analogy of walking around with the spoon and, and the oil in the spoon and taking a look at what's, what's going on around you is that like I've been working a new job for about six months now and like maybe a month in or so I was like okay like I I'm not living at my parents I'm here like is this something I can sustain can I start a family like what is that going to look like and it's like I'm I'm starting to jump like leaps and bounds into the future but the thing that stands out is like okay let's take stock of what matters it's okay i've got a new job that's working the people at the job like me um i have a, a mission a new mission so to speak like i'm learning something that has to do with what i studied i actually like it and i want to get better at it but I'm struggling with like report writing and this like this is something difficult it's like okay I've got to sit read this reread this try it again and try it again and try it again and it's like okay this is this is difficult but it's like it's something that I need to do because it's putting me in a better place than where I was and now I know I don't just have work, but I've got a, a creative outlet outside of work. And then being on my own, I also have the opportunity to go explore the world around me. It's like, okay, like go to work, come back home, go to work, come back home. It's like, okay, well, the weekend's here. Let's go explore. Let's go see something or let's reach out to people and do a podcast because it's like you want to i want to have a conversation with someone and just be like let me get to know someone outside of myself and actually remind myself that oh okay like you do value people you don't need to talk to somebody 24 7 to be like okay here are all the relationships that i have but it's um i can take the time to get to know someone and just be like if it's one time that that's okay if it's if there's a a reason or a pull to be like okay like my relationship with my friends quote unquote or acquaintances isn't the same as what someone else's is like what do i do with that do i obsess about what they have versus what i don't have or do i kind of learn to appreciate what I do have and like maybe check my ego and say, okay, like you want what they have, you don't have it, but you ha want what they have and it, it may not be right, but you can get over it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's such a, a deeper thing, right? You being happy with what you're given or what you've pursued and to not quit on it. And there's a lot of things going on. And uh, I think at the end of the day, to make it as easy, it's like you focus on being a 10, you're going to attract those 10s around you, hopefully. Yeah. As long as you surround yourself best, you know, um, you know, I've been, I've been there where it's like, I've had to stop hanging out with certain kinds of people. Um, it's not benefiting for where I'm trying to go or what I'm trying to do, um, whether relationship wise, uh, whether friendship wise, sometimes even family, you gotta be like, Ooh, you gotta step with this. I can't be around you too long <laughs> because the influences, at least for me, 
I'm so sensitive to everything around me. I gotta have good music all the time. I gotta, you know, be in a good mood because that affects every little thing I do. It'll mm. if I'm not in a good mood, that's gonna affect my art. That's gonna yeah. affect the show that I do. It's gonna affect uh, the tattoo that I do. You know, it, everything um, is just affecting me and uh, it got to be in a better space so it's like this job is hard right uh, i gotta perform 30 minutes for a crowd that is not my demographic <laughs> <laughs> i gotta really work that and pull teeth you know for example and i don't like it but it'll help me in the long run for example um this doing tat learning how to do tattoos i mean i had to do a bunch of tattoos a lot of crappy tattoos too uh to learn how to get to where i am at now a lot of tribals a lot of small tattoos little butterflies a lot of things that you got to learn to get to the bigger thing um yeah yeah i get you i get you on that yeah so well, i like the quote i like the quote that you have because it is very true yeah um, it's where you find your purpose it's where you find and i definitely find my purpose being um showing other minorities that they can do anything they want to they that they as long as they're exposed to it because i didn't you know growing up you had at least for me uh um puerto rican afro latino whatever we can dissect yeah, that in yeah. so many ways and um i never saw myself represented on any kind of television show any movie growing up so i didn't know it was possible i didn't know that there was other avenues as opposed to when you say comedy it doesn't necessarily have to be stand-up it could be mm -hmm. comedy writing there's late night shows there's sketch comedy there's comic books inside there's comedy in that you know there's commercials there's so many things that but if you're not exposed to it if you don't see anyone that looks like you doing these things you don't know that it's possible and i find that my thing where it's like even even as a tattoo artist you know there's not a lot of tattoo artists that look like me yeah. you know so uh it, it gets into even that um and i find the more i dive into my intersectionality i find that there are other people who are like that and they can benefit from seeing someone doing it yeah i guess I, i'm curious what, what was your first bad tattoo like if you remember it <laughs> uh well i mean my first that well i guess it wasn't bad uh but it, my first tattoo i was doing it on my homeboy and it was his first tattoo to get mm. so he was shaking i was shaking <laughs> and it was his mom's name so we're all shaking just in yeah. <laughs> so uh i mean you go through that first beginning i mean technically they're all bad tattoos i mean at a time you're like oh i got paid for it so it's a great tattoo <laughs> Well, initially, they're all ugly ass tattoos. Uh, and that's what it is. It's just practicing, learning, practicing, learning. You charge cheaper. Yeah. And then you get, you know, more and more uh, as you go. And then you can start charging, you know, thousand bucks, whatever the case may be. Yeah. I think that that's awesome. And um, some something you said that that stood out to me also when you when you speak about um, having representation, being able to see yourself in, in other environments before believing you could do that. Um, is there anything that you maybe didn't see someone that looked like you, but it still got your interest just from like the thing? Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Eddie Murphy. Right. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, I, yeah, Eddie Murphy, you have, uh, you have Mike Myers, you have, uh, I could, and maybe that's the superpower that I have as a writer now, 
that I can try to find a relatable experience, no matter if it's an alien, it's a fucking dog, it's a whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I definitely try to find myself because growing up, especially in a Florida where it's not as now it's diverse. Mm -hmm. Growing up, it was not diverse. Gotcha. Uh, you know, so I was always I was never black enough. I was never white enough. I was never mm -hmm. Latino. I was all this is a mixture that never worked. Yeah. And yeah. so finding that as my superpower was very tough. <laughs> yeah. So uh yeah, yeah. It, it's it's did I answer your question? You did. I, and I, it's funny because I, I I can definitely echo with that when you say being enough of this. It's like I, I for me it's um it's different like coming from another country immigrating here and then trying to learn the culture where where i thought it was it was funny and strange when someone told me for the first time it's like you're not black enough and i was like i was like what does that mean it's like i think i'm pretty dark but i guess they were getting at the way you talk the way that you the things that you know the things that you do or you don't do and i was like okay like it, I don't think it ever offended me. It, it kind of just annoyed me a bit. But like growing up, and I guess maybe that's the beauty of growing up, you're able to distinguish. Well, if you grow up, you're you you learn to distinguish between what that that, that was a good key right there. If you grow up, because right. I know I know people who still have that kind of mentality and right. don't understand that it's layered, and you don't have to be one specific way to consider yourself uh, black, for example. Right, so. right, and I, I guess the I, I feel like maybe I, I, I'm pushing back on two things you've said, but only I guess the only reason I, I do that is one to kind of share also my thought not to necessarily oppose what you're saying but to just be like okay like yeah it's important to share different opinions and not just to kind of all be head nodding and going along because within the last two years especially with um, like COVID and uh, the protests and different things like that I've heard and seen a lot of things that look like window dressing essentially where a lot of people say things that sound good but a lot of the undertones get missed where people have said a lot about like diversity and it's always about like this color thing but it's like if you read if you study history if you go looking for the information to actually learn like hey what is this thing how can I do it you start to understand that in some senses or in some places groupings aren't always like it's not always ideal because like the same person that will tell you hey like you need representation you need this is the same person that will have the crab in a barrel mentality which is like okay what what's really going on here because someone will say okay because we have this representation we have this like we don't recognize that we're not thinking differently. Like people don't talk about having different conversations. Like, okay, if uh, I remember uh, doing Uber for a few months, I, I think I was only able to last a few months. Like I met some good people. I, I met one guy in particular. It's just I think he was just having a time because I I made the <laughs> the foolish decision to be like okay i'm in north georgia i'm gonna pick somebody up that's all the way in chattanooga and take them to their destination in atlanta and that's maybe like about an hour close to an hour and a half ride maybe maybe it was about four, let's say 40 minutes so like for 40 minutes i'm driving this person and we're kind of having dialogue kind of going back and forth uh, maybe listening to a podcast or something that was positive because I'm like you were saying earlier trying to have that that positive mindset but for him he kind of told me a part of his life experience but he was upset into things aren't fair things are never going to be fair and I didn't want to dismiss what he was saying because it's like I don't have his life and he was reminding me like the things that are wrong now 
were the things that were wrong when it was his what his this is what his dad told him so this is what he's telling me and i was like he's not wrong per se but it's like maybe the the approach could be different like there there's going to be hurdles but it's like if the attention for like 40 minute ride was placed on these are the hurdles these are the hurdles these are the hurdles so i'm like okay well is there anything we can do about the hurdles is there anything that we can change to at least make our life better make our day to day better or is it like like if you and i see that there's a problem right here and then we just say hey there's a problem right there and then we wake up tomorrow and we say hey there's a problem right there it's like what what's really yeah you got to execute something right right what's really changing <laughs> so it's like okay if, if you see someone's trying something and you don't necessarily agree with the idea you either let them do what they're doing or you just you can stand back and be like this isn't going to work that's not going to work it's like you're not moving you're not getting closer to like actually achieving something. You just keep repeating like, okay, this has happened. This has happened. This has happened. And it's like, yeah, it's, 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 it's not, it's not false. It's, I mean, you're not lying. It, it has happened, but then like, what are we going to do about it? And it's right. like being reminded sometime that like you have the opportunity to do things like through comedy, be able to take in your environment and be like, Hey, here's a, here's a cool story that you can enjoy, like with pain, with other things, like you can still kind of laugh. Like you, you can look yeah. in the mirror and you can kind of laugh at yourself. Otherwise it's like, it's going to be a pretty meaningless, miserable life. And that's, that's not something you want to, you want to endure. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just using that, the experience to your advantage. And it's like, you know, you get knocked out in a boxing match. You either can get knocked out, cool, mm -hmm. or you can try to get back up. Yeah. You know? um, but you're only going to get back up if you have a why, like what a reason to get back up, whether if it's, you know, you look back and you see your kids or, you know, all those montages that Rocky, when he gets knocked out, mm -hmm. the flashbacks, all the training that you did, all, you, you know, your family, your, your broke. You know, all those are your your whys, your reasons. And then um, setting yourself up too, you know, for did you, and we're just going to use the best, uh, the boxing analogy where it's like, did you train hard enough mm -hmm. for this specific outcome? Did you, you know, do this? Yeah, because we're going to have those times where we want to complain, we want to do this. There are a lot of things that I want to complain about. The difference is, uh, am I going to make the initiative to execute an idea that takes me out of that? Mm. Um, and a lot of people don't want to do that. <laughs> that yeah. It's easier said than done. Not a lot of people want to, it's a lot more work. So they sometimes people rather just do the nine to five. I'd go insane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would go insane if I had to do a nine to five and do a normal job. I mean, I've done normal jobs. Yeah. And now, and here's, here's a whole, we're going to flip this whole thing over. <laughs> now, because I appreciate certain things in life and I'm, you know, with my customer services off the chain because of comedy, um, I feel like I can get any job now. I could be, you know, a, a, a waiter and I feel like maybe I won't be able to hold things correctly, but my attitude towards that, mm -hmm. whatever it is, is going to be completely different. It's going to be, I'm going to make sure I can be employee of the month effortlessly because I enjoy whatever it is that I put my mind to. Um, and I think that's a whole nother thing right there where it's like, if you and I heard what was it, Eric Thomas, Dr. Eric Thomas, the yeah. <laughs> hip hop preacher, uh, he it was like, you you don't got to be here, you get to be here. And when I, I was like, Woo, that right there, that's a little game changer because I don't have to do these things, I want to do them. 
you know so yeah. I, once you have that perspective because life yeah absolutely is unfair it's it will knock you in your mouth it will knock you down uh it's just what we do and and don't get me wrong take the time to soak in it sometimes it's okay it's okay i mean sometimes i'd be like man forget this stuff i'm just gonna be my sad little self but i'm gonna paint and i'm gonna try to express myself in another way um and yeah and but you have to set your foundation up right properly and yeah. without that again all the mental health the physical health the uh environmental health you have to set yourself up properly if you don't then that's where it gets even a lot harder a lot uh more difficult to pursue or what makes you happy that yeah sense. that makes sense well let people know where they can find you whether it's online or offline just to like right. be able to get more of this all right well we i got a whole bunch of things so we got the websites we got throw order 360.com t-r-o-v-a-d-o-r 360.com the same thing could be for an, my other uh comedy personal page mm -hmm. at throw 360 then i got another website for my art stuff it's called chriso style c-h-r-i-s-s-o style s-t-y-l-e i believe i spelled that right so i got dyslexia and I might switch it anyways dot com yeah. And then also for my art page on Instagram, Chriso Style, same thing. Um, I got those. I mean, if you want the Twitters, I got Throw a 180, mm -hmm. which is only half of me because it's just words. Uh, so uh, I got that. I got, um, I mean, it depends on what we talk about. I got cartoons like comics mm -hmm. that are on instagram it's all connected if you look in the bios or the website it's all there i got also gotcha. um websites for clothing that i also do uh different things uh same thing it's all the links in the bios you want to purchase some art from me whether clothing or cell phone case or laptop case i got so many things on those sites uh with my art on it Awesome. Love it. One last question I've got for you. Are you still who you said you were? Oh, yeah. I'm a confused liminal being. No, not confused, but uh, I'm still a liminal being that can be placed in one box. Absolutely. It's a good question. It's a good question because, I mean, that uh, is never going to leave. I, I mean, it's my biggest superpower, but also my greatest downfall. Awesome. I appreciate you, Chris. Thank you for having me, man. Thanks for being on and we'll catch up next time. Yeah.